Uh, now, do I look at you or do I look at the camera? Please, sir. Uh, that, that's <laughs> much more pleasant. Oh, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to have you, uh, Lord McNally. Um, the, Liberal, the Liberal Democrats will be holding their annual autumn conference in a few weeks, and we were wondering what the agenda was for the coming years with the Liberal Democrats and the coalition. It's going to be a, a very interesting and a very important conference uh, for us. It'll be our second um, annual conference. We have a spring conference, but the major conference uh, for all major political parties uh, in the autumn. And ours is the first of the major political conferences. Uh, and it, it will be a, a kind of agenda setter uh, for the political year. Uh, Parliament um, will be back to start on the legislation and it's a chance for the, the party leadership both to um, reinvigorate the membership mm -hmm. uh, but also to, to listen to their uh, concerns. Uh, and I think that um, we, we've got a number of uh, uh, tough discussions to have at the conference. Um, we're 18 months into the coalition government. Um, we very consciously have embarked on uh, a policy of economic retrenchment in the face of the economic crisis uh, that we inherited. Um, but in trying to uh, uh, rebalance the economy, um, we are having to take very tough decisions, decisions that affect um, things that are very dear to the party's heart in terms of um, social services and local government, um, and uh, the whole range of um, government activities, um, wh whether you're looking at health or housing or, or education, um, or uh, the support services that local government give, or in my own area, the amount of aid we can give for people involved in legal disputes, um, how we um, uh, help people uh, avoid uh, crime, how we police our streets, all have to, be, the decisions on that all have to be taken against a very tough economic background. And so being in government means making hard choices and uh, a debate about where we're making that cho those choices and how we're making those choices is going to do dominate the conference. Um, but I, I I am confident myself that, that the party is, is still up for being in government. Um, as you probably know, we, we had not been um, in government. Uh, well, we, uh, there was a, a small liberal contingent in uh, the wartime coalition, uh, but uh, as fully participating in government, it, it's over 80 years since the Liberal Party was in government. Um, so going into government at a time of economic crisis, having to take tough political decisions was a big test for the party. Um, but I think it stood up extremely well. Um, but uh, it, it will make it a very interesting um, conference because the media will be looking very closely at the mood of the party. Yeah. Is it still willing to stick with it and, and see this... Um, coalition government through. Uh, as I say, I'm pretty confident that it will, uh, but it's, uh, it's not going to be um, a, a joyride of a conference. It, it's going to be a tough one. And the reputation of our party is that the members um, are not afraid to tell their leadership when they think they're going wrong. So we can uh, expect some uh, fairly frank criticism I think so. But hopefully a little bit of praise as well. <laughs> so you definitely see a future um, with the Conservative government? I think what we set our hand to with the coalition agr um, agreement uh, was a programme for this parliament um, which we went into in the national interests. Uh, and uh, my view is that the coalition has worked remarkably well as I say, we, we have faced up to 
some very tough decisions as far as um, the uh, spending by government. Uh, the, uh, we've faced up to uh, the necessity to uh, rein in activities across uh, the whole range of um, uh, government expenditure. But I think we've done so in a way which has um, tried to protect the most vulnerable and is in line with the party's principles. Um, we have always been clear, and the Conservative Party has been equally clear, um, that uh, this isn't uh, um, a road to a merger. It is two uh, independent parties working together in the national interest uh, to see us through uh, to uh, economic recovery. And we think that that is, is the patriotic thing to do, to use a, a, not, a, a word not often used in, in British politics, but, but it is in the national interest um, that we work together. And um, I think that thus far um, we have delivered on what we promised, uh, both in terms of stable government um, and setting us forward on the road to economic recovery. And to what extent can we see um, the members' um, concerns channelled into policy with the conference? Um, well, first of all, it, it's the members that draft the policies, uh, draft the conference resolutions, and uh, you know, I suspect that we will have um, on the conference agenda um, the kind of uh, uh, policy concerns um, uh, at our last spring conference we, we had uh, a, conf uh, a resolution uh, expressing concerns about health policy um, we've tried to respond to some of that since then in revising fundamentally um, the health bill and we'll, we'll see what the party thinks of the, those attempts to meet their concerns um, that um, the, the health bill as it was drafted um, uh, undermined the basic um, concept of a national health service. Uh, we hope and believe that as amended now it, it doesn't uh, but I think there will be uh, discussion on that. Um, there is concern about the government's uh, policies for um, reform of the police uh, with this idea of police commissioners uh, and I suspect that there will be uh, quite a lot of uh, debate about that. Um, we have uh, a debate or a policy going forward um, which is uh, uh, intended uh, to give wider powers to local government. Um, but we're very much a party of local government. A, part, a great deal of our strength is the base at local level. Uh, so I suspect we'll hear uh, some very uh, keen comments uh, about uh, local government, the powers of local government um, at, at the conference. And then we've always been uh, a party of civil liberties and human rights. And I think there will be some healthy debate about uh, the issues uh, surrounding the, the future of the Human Rights Act, uh, uh, the counter-terrorism measures that the government's uh, proposing. Um, it, it's a very full agenda and then of course we, we'll have the, the opportunity um, to hear from um, uh, Vince Cable who's the Business Secretary about uh, how the um, economy is responding uh, in, and the prospects for recovery and I suspect we'll have quite a lot of uh, concerns um, from our members in the regions outside the South East mm. um, where recession is a bit harder, unemployment higher. Uh, there's certainly going to be a, a big debate about youth unemployment uh, which is very worrying. Uh, a million young people unemployed uh, a lot even of our graduates not getting jobs. Um, I think we've got to uh, give priority uh, to that. Um, we have uh, a housing crisis 
uh, a short of, uh, we inherited uh, a very low level of house building and um, a problem of uh, soaring house, house prices because of shortages which are preventing many young couples um, from uh, getting into uh, the housing market. So, you know, it, it's, it's a, a very, very tough agenda, but uh, what I would say, to, and I will be saying it at conference, and I'm sure Nick Clegg will be saying it to conference, um, the problems that we're facing are the problems the country's facing, and what the challenge is, is have we as a party um, uh, the courage and the sense of responsibility um, to face up to those challenges that would have been there anyway. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't that we've invented the challenges, the problems are there anyway, it's whether we've got the policies uh, to meet those challenges. And, and I, I'm, one of the things I like about our conferences is that, that they are genuine consultations with the membership. As I say, the debates are often fierce and mm. the platform can not always be confident of uh, their views carrying the day, but I think it makes, them, it makes the Liberal Democrat conference <coughs> by far the most interesting and, and politically charged of the conferences. At the, uh, I'm afraid the Labour and Conservative parties, uh, their, their conferences are now um, a public relations exercise as is rather than mm. genuine consultations. I think ours is still a, a good old-fashioned party political conference with the membership having a, a voice and a say in developing policy. Going back to um, the question of centralisation of government, obviously David Cameron um, um, put a lot of emphasis on decentralisation. Mm. Do you think this has this is been achieved for the coalition government? And is this necessarily a good thing? Um, I think it's a good thing. Mm. Um, I think the devolving of power, uh, localism, um, it, is healthy uh, because mm. I think the closer um, the decision making is to the people who are affected by the decisions, the better. And one of the criticisms that have been made of the British state um, I, I, over uh, the last century is that it has become more and more centralised, and it probably is true um, that we are more a more centralised state um, than most certainly in, in um, Europe. Um, parties often say that they want to decentralise, and then when they're faced with the, the facts of, of getting things done, there is a temptation to bring power into the centre. Um, I think the Prime Minister's heart's still in the right place, <coughs> um, and I think the uh, Department for Local Government, um, which is headed by Eric Pickles, uh, a Conservative with a very uh, deep roots in local government, and with the Liberal Democrat Minister being Andrew Stunnell, who has again a, a strong tradition of local government. I think the, the attempt is still there to um, devolve power and of course uh, that brings with it its problems as well. I mean mm. with, with Scotland, uh, the SNP in power and talking about a, um, a separatism refer referendum but on, in the main, and our party has always been a party of devolution, uh, we want to see power um, away from Whitehall and Westminster and into the regions and countries, um, into Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland and to the regions of England, because we think de de decisions are more effective and better made if they are made locally. Uh, but in government it's always a tug, uh, a tug between a central government that wants to do things, wants to give instructions, wants to get responses, 
uh, and the desire to carry the various regions with you and what we do. And it's, it's, it's a, a never-ending task for government. Uh, but I think, I think we're still heading in the right direction in trying to localise and devolve power. Um, going back to um, youth unemployment, how does the coalition agreement plan to um, tackle youth unemployment, which was obviously um, one of the deciding factors of the UK riots? Yeah, well, we're still looking at the, the factors that were in play in the riots, um, and certainly um, youth unemployment um, will undoubtedly be uh, one of the factors um, although you know I think uh, th there was quite a lot of uh, old-fashioned criminality in what happened mm. uh, but riots apart the level of youth unemployment is not tolerable in my opinion and I don't think certainly the party uh, I think it will be reflected in the debates at conference will be looking for action in, in that term. Uh, we are putting a lot of money, much, much more than has historically been done, certainly in the last half century, into uh, training and apprenticeships um, to encourage um, the, the young people uh, below university level, or perhaps more accurately separate than university level, um, to get um, proper training and proper qualifications. Uh, one of the reoccurring problems of the British economy really since the Second World War is that we've been underskilled um, at, at the technical level, at the, the plumbers, the electricians, the engineers and I think we're, we're going to put a lot more emphasis into um, trying to um, skill up um, our um, young people uh, to meet the challenges of a, a world where um, Britain's role in it will be as a, a value-added economy and we're going to have to uh, be able to uh, make and design uh, at the higher end of the economic uh, spectrum in terms of our manufacturing and we'll have to uh, succeed in um, areas such as design and services again uh, by the quality and skills of our um, uh, young people. Uh, so part of it is getting an economy that's moving again um, to that part it, the, is, is the, the rebalancing of the economy to encourage more investment by the private sector and we're beginning to see a little bit of that. The, the economy is still held back uh, by the damage that was done by the um, uh, banking crisis but in other parts of the economy there are signs of life. Uh, the housing crisis is also an opportunity um, because if we can start building houses again uh, we suck into employment a whole range of um, skills uh, that can be uh, used and, and uh, we, we need the young people uh, to be able to do that. So I think, I think we can bring forward a range of policies on a number of fronts um, that, that will start creating the necessary jobs for young people. And that is a responsibility of government. It is certainly a responsibility in terms of uh, creating the atmosphere that will allow the private sector uh, to invest and to expand. But I went yesterday to um, Silverstone, um, which is our big race motor racing circuit, and I saw there an amazing um, range of investments in high-tech engineering that is a world class. Um, it is easy to get very pessimistic uh, about our uh, future, uh, but I think that one of the problems we may have uh, gone into is that uh, we probably allowed our manufacturing base uh, to contract too far and too fast, 
And I think that there is a, an opportunity there for us to rebuild our manufacturing base. Uh, and I still think that we've got world-class service industries. Banking may have had a bad um, shock in, of late, but we still have financial services that are of world quality. Our legal services are, are of world quality. Um, we can restructure and rebuild this economy and we have also got a very active and vibrant small business sector um, which we're looking uh, uh, to encourage by tax breaks, by um, uh, encouraging them into areas uh, of high unemployment to develop their industries. So, you know, I'm, I've opened the interview by saying that we had a tough agenda. We certainly mm -hmm. don't. But I'm not pessimistic about it. I'm, I'm rather optimistic. Um, going back to the UK riots um, earlier last month, uh, politicians were quick to assume um, the role of lawmaker with regards to sentencing. Um, had the offences been made prior to the riots, would the sentences have been as harsh? Um, I've, I've got a view, view on this. First of all, um, we have a, a very good system in this country where Parliament makes the laws, um, the police enforce the laws, and the courts, the judges, the juries, the magistrates um, uh, impose the sentences. And th that separation of power is a very healthy one. Mm -hmm. um, of course, when something like the riots happen, um, the public, quite rightly, first of all, were very shocked. I don't think people should underestimate just how shocked, not only the people who lived in the areas, but what they saw on their televisions. I mean, that, that was really, really shocking, and there's no other word but shocking. And because it was shocking, people said, you know, something must be done. What are you doing? Where, why aren't these people being arrested? Why are they? Now, I think we actually responded remarkably well. A lot of people were arrested, over 3,000, um, and a lot of them are now going through um, the criminal justice system. Um, some of those will, um, I suspect, have harsher punishments than they would have done outside the riot the atmosphere of a riot. Mm -hmm. But, but I actually, I do think the court is right to take into uh, um, account the context that if you have been participating in a riot um, and uh, stealing things or damaging things, uh, I, I think that they are entitled to take that into account in judging what the sentence is. What, what, what hasn't happened is that we haven't moved outside the rule of law. Mm -hmm. The judges, the magistrates have all acted according to guidelines that were laid down outside the riot atmosphere mm -hmm. and that's how it should be. You, do, you don't want to um, respond to a riot by hysteria. Uh, you'll get things wrong if you do. Um, and I think our system has worked uh, pretty well uh, the, and the police and um, the court services when we needed to we sat through the night, we sat at weekends um, we've dealt with the um, aftermath of the riots uh, uh, very quickly uh, we're moving very quickly in terms of um, making sure that the um, people who had direct injury in terms of businesses are, are getting help. Um, we are um, putting funding into the areas that were most damaged uh, so that they can economically recover. Um, it, it, it was a shock, um, but I think we have shown a resilience in responding to it. And I think now we're, we're going to look very carefully at what lessons to be learned. Um, there may be lessons to be learned about the speed of our 
justice system. It can be a little bit leisurely. Um, so perhaps um, the, there are some lessons there. Um, the police will undoubtedly uh, learn lessons uh, about uh, spotting trouble and responding to trouble uh, wh when it's growing. Um, we're taking a look at gang culture uh, and how much this concept of gangs is having an influence in these issues. Uh, we'll probably have a look at how um, new social networking is affecting things. That uh, I don't myself believe that the riots were organised on uh, blackberries, but it certainly moved information around in a way that I think slightly caught the um, authorities uh, on the back foot. But one of the things that I, I take pride in in our society is, that I, is its resilience and its capacity to learn. I, I, I don't think um, the, the riots um, were all the fault of um, deprivation or unemployment. Um, but I do think some of those elements may be in play. Uh, I think in a, in a mature society, when something like that happens, uh, you try and learn the lessons, uh, you try and respond uh, to uh, weaknesses and failings, you try and put in place um, some uh, positive responses, and that, that's what we're doing. Obviously, I mean, there was a lot of criminal acts criminal action within the riots and a lot of it was looting. Um, but to what extent were the riots, in your opinion, a result of the Liberal Democrats' U-turn on tuition fees? Obviously a lot of them were youth and students. Uh, no, I, I disagree with you on that. Um, I mean, the, the students did uh, demonstrate and protest separately. Actually, the, uh, now we're seeing the statistics of those that have been arrested. Um, most of the people um, who were arrested uh, were over the age of 18. I think less than 20% were under 18. Um, mo the range of offenders um, probably reflected the range of... Um Oops. Oops. Does that stop the machine working? Mm. That's okay. Okay. Last question, please. From yeah, I, I, I disagree that it, it was uh, um, uh, that it was a youth riot. It, it was much broader than that. In fact, only about twenty percent uh, were under eighteen. I don't think that there was a discernible uh, student participation in, in the riots. Um, I, I think the disappointment about tuition fees expressed by students um, is understandable um, but it was one of those very tough decisions that we had to take in terms of f financing uh, higher education. It's very difficult uh, to get through to people uh, first of all that the higher fees aren't paid in advance, um, they're paid over a lifetime, um, that the uh, um, protection of uh, poorer students is greater under the system the coalition government brought in um, than was on offer by the then Labour government or had been promised uh, by the Conservatives. And we, we didn't deliver as we'd hoped in terms of um, uh, tuition fees because of the uh, economic circumstances uh, we found and the need to finance higher education. Um, but I do think that, that um, students, when they uh, come to examine the reality of the tuition fee policy we put in, um, will have to accept or admit uh, that it is much fairer than was in place before. Um, 
And as I say, I, I do not think, I, I do, I, I, in fact, I reject the idea uh, that it was uh, f frustration or disappointment or anger about tuition fees. There was no evidence in the riots that, that there was uh, um, student... General public sector cuts. Public sector cuts, I think, are, um, again, it was not a factor in the riots in terms of um, that it was persistent uh, participation by people who had lost their job in the public sector. Uh, I, as you say, I think the riots themselves were more opportunistic and criminality based than social based. Um, but I do accept that some of the uh, strains and stresses that we'll face you know, over the next year um, will be caused by the unemployment that's caused by cuts in public sector. Uh, I mean, it, it, is, it is not, there are not easy choices for government at the moment. Um, not if we want to avoid um, our co economy uh, going down into meltdown. Um, it, it's not a matter of um, spending money on uh, good causes uh, or um, uh, being harsh unless we get the economy straight we will find ourselves as other countries in Europe have found themselves having to pay much much more for the money they borrow and we're still borrowing enormous amounts it isn't that we've solved the deficit we still are a deficit country and we're still having to borrow large amounts of money to finance our public expenditure uh, at the moment though we have the confidence of the market that we are addressing the the fundamental problems of our economy and because we've got the confidence of the market we are paying far far less for the money that we borrow than some countries who have lost the confidence of the market. Um, some of the um, things that one has to do in those circumstances are extremely um, difficult and some of them mean taking decisions which will leave for another day some real problems. In, in my own area I would like to spend a lot more money on rehabilitation of offenders to try and get them out of the um, uh, circle of prison, offending, back into prison, out, offending, back into prison. If we could break that circle, we protect people from future offences, the cost of future offences. Um, but I haven't got the budget to do some of the things I want to do mm. at the moment. Um, but getting the economy right, building the basis for economic recovery um, is the prerequisite to um, doing a lot of other things you want to do in politics. If, if you've got a failed economy, uh, you can have all the highfalutin dreams in the world but you'll not be able to fulfill those dreams because you won't have the resources. Mm. Um, the rights also exposed a shortage in uh, the police forces. Um, David Cummings, obviously the public sector cuts also affected the police forces and David Cummings vowed that he would put more police um, on UK streets. What is your opinion on that? Well, we'll have, we, again, we'll have to look uh, on this. And we have a large number of uh, police. One of the things that our reforms are looking at is whether we can use the police we have more efficiently, more effectively. Um, it, it is always difficult um, to say uh, do more for less. Uh, but it's also possible to um, as you do in private sector, look at pu public sector and see if there are efficiencies uh, that would allow the police um, to operate more effectively 
Uh, what people want is policemen on the streets. They want the visibility that gives them confidence. And I agree with them. But what we found is that so often there are too many policemen doing bureauc bureaucratic jobs, some of which government imposes on them in terms of um, the way they do their jobs. What we're asking the police to do is to comb through their procedures and their um, methods of working uh, to see if they can operate more effectively in putting the police on the street that the public do, w want, uh, but without necessarily um, having a, a bureaucracy under that um, which doesn't give public confidence at all. How are we doing for time? Yes. Do you still have some time? Just how long do you want to go on? <laughs> I write you have to leave that. But I, okay, if we could, um, if I could ask you a few questions about Turkey. Okay. Like, yes. Um, let's do that, and then because I've got I've got to get back, as I say, to my other office. But glad to. What is your um, opinion on Turkey's role within the EU and its EU accession plan? Well, w first of all. Uh, uh, as you may know, the Liberal Democrats are probably uh, the most uh, pro-European of the British political parties. Uh, one of our part founder parties, the Liberal Party, was the first British political party to advocate our membership. And we, we have been extremely um, supportive of, of Britain's membership within the EU and the expansion of the EU. Uh, we are extremely supportive of uh, Tur Turkey's application and certainly uh, the uh, coalition government, which I know uh, and I pay tribute, but was building on the work that the Labour government has d did, um, wants to be as supportive as possible uh, to um, Turkey's application. Uh, if I may make a personal comment, I, I, I do think um, uh, that uh, uh, Turkey has got uh, an extremely uh, important role to play. Um, it, it's uh, one of the economic success stories. Uh, some, you know, people get very excited about uh, Brazil and Russia and India and China, the BRICS. Uh, I, d I don't know where you'd put a Turkey in and still get a name, but but uh, perhaps the brick. <laughs> but but Turkey has got an economic record which is extremely impressive. And uh, last time I, I went to Turkey, um, I was quite amazed at the the sense of dynamism uh, there. So I think you know in terms of uh, economic capacity and uh, prospects, uh, ch uh, Turkey makes a very um, sensible partner uh, for uh, the EU and a, a very good prospect for membership. Uh, there's obviously a long way to go in terms of uh, negotiations, but uh, we are uh, very uh, willing and eager to help uh, I know again in my own uh, range uh, of um, the Ministry of Justice uh, we are already uh, cooperating and in dialogue with uh, uh, Turkey uh, about um, uh, the range of policies uh, affected uh, by the Justice Ministry and uh, you know as I say we, we are help, eager uh, to help in, in that. Um, I also think that um, uh, Turkey has uh, got an important regional role. It, you know, it, its location um, uh, it gives it um, an influence and an experience um, in a part of the world where um, influence and experience is sorely needed. And I think, you know. Uh, uh, a confident Turkey playing a positive role um, in the region cannot but be a, a thing that help. And you know, I think um, 
David Cameron, uh, you know, it wasn't an accident that uh, David Cameron uh, made one of his first visits after being Prime Minister uh, to Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a, a cooperation agreement with uh, Turkey which intends to expand contact at all levels, um, including uh, trade, but, but broader in cultural and political levels as well. Uh, we certainly welcome um, uh, your participation in the um, uh, Liberal Democrat Conference and uh, we want to build up uh, 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 good links with Tur Turkey uh, if we can. Um, finally, um, the, AK, the AK party won the third consecutive time earlier this year and they are looking to build on the constitution. What, as a justice minister, what is your role and what is your opinion? Well, uh, my hope is, I mean, in many ways, um, the, the world is watching Turkey because uh, we are watching whether uh, a Muslim country um, can build and work and develop uh, a modern 21st century functioning democracy. Uh, and I, I think uh, it is going to be interesting and indeed exciting to see uh, Turkey doing that. And if it does it well and it does it right, um, it is going to um, have a, an influential um, role and a leadership role with other countries trying to follow that path. Um, in terms of, as I say, the judicial ministry, ju justice ministry, um, it, it isn't rocket science, it, but, but it's what we, what we do and it, what I said earlier about how we dealt ourselves with the riots. Um, you, you have a democratically elected parliament uh, that makes the law uh, you have a, a corruption-free uh, police force that enforces the law uh, and you have an independent judiciary that oversees that law. If you can keep that separation of power and those qualities in the machinery of state, um, you will have a functioning democracy. I don't claim, by the way, I'm not saying that we've reached some perfection mm -hmm. Uh, but what I think is useful is that uh, where uh, um, exchange of views, exchange of experts, exchange of ideas and information um, can only help. And certainly, as I say, we're all. I went to um, uh, um, a conference in Turkey shortly after I'd been became a minister, uh, which was talking with um, uh, your. Uh, uh, Justice Department and I certainly want to see that kind of thing uh, built on both in terms of our bilateral relations and also to underpin the strength of Turkey's um, application for the uh, uh, me full membership of the EU. Uh, I really, as I say, I, one of the reasons why I, I was uh, very eager to do this interview uh, you know, I welcome the fact that Turkey is having a fringe meeting at our conference. Um, I welcome um, that there is a, a good English language newspaper covering uh, both national and international affairs from uh, the Turkish perspective. And I really do see, and I, you know, I, in this respect, I, I speak not just as a liberal democrat but as a British minister, I think we give very, very high priority uh, to building better and closer relations with Turkey. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Okay, back to work. Uh, Not that that wasn't work, but it was very <laughs> pleasant work, or you made it so. <laughs>